Hello everyone, good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to Berlinale Talents. Welcome to Curious Choices, The End of Mistakes. It is our last session of Berlinale Talents 2019 here in How To, so I'm very happy that you're all here to join us to wrap up this week. And we're very proud and lucky to have such wonderful guests on stage tonight. Please welcome Nada Vlapit and Vincenzo Bunio. Well, uh, welcome to everybody. Good, good evening. I'm extremely happy to have the opportunity of uh, having this conversation with Nada Vlapit. Uh, I'm a member also, I, I run the World Cinema Fund of the Berlinale, but I'm also a member of the selection committee of the competition. And um, maybe I shouldn't say that, but I'm extremely impressed by your film. It's definitely one of my favorite films of this Thanks. Berlinale. And um, so let's talk about it. But before starting, I would uh, ask this question, so what about mistakes, so which is the leading content of Talents 2019, and uh, what about your first uh, trip to France so many years ago? Was it a mistake, or it would say it was one of the best decisions in your life? Uh, yeah. So, uh, hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, so since I'm a very disciplined person, uh, you, you sent me like this title of mistakes, so I've been thinking about mistakes all day long. Um, and uh, I, I, I told, I told Vinc Vincenzo before, I was, I mean, I think that uh, in, in all my work, in all my movies, and maybe, maybe, I don't know what you think about it, but maybe it, it arrives to the, to the, to the, for, to the deepest level in the, the the last one, my real attempt above, you know, uh, plot, narration, ideas, ta -ta 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 -ta, is to grasp uh, this particular moment in existence, in universe, in, in the existence of in existence in life, and to put it on screen. And I always feel that there is something um, confused. Uh, strange, chaotic in existence, which we usually fail to imitate in cinema. Like, uh, we usually tend to make, I think, films that are much more uh, ordered than life. And I think that a lot of us, in a very instinctive way, when, when we look around us, when we, when we look about our own life, we feel it. And and yet it's not easy to overcome this gap. And I try to understand what's the main thing that lacks in f to films to, to become as strange, unbelievable, impossible, chaotic as life. And I understood it's mistakes. I mean, I think we, you know, in cinema we have, uh, we have such a, 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 a a sophisticated system that is there in order to prevent from the mistakes to to arrive to the final uh, result to the screen i mean first you know it's all this process of uh, writing a script and in the script if you make mistakes what does it mean I don't know, if there's something excessive in the screen if if, if some so you know in all these these institutions and film funds they 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 they, they I mean, slowly, slowly, you, 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 they make you correct their, your mistakes. And there is the casting, and there is a, and then in the shooting, and the shooting you have several takes. So with the first take gone wrong, you'll do a second one. And if there's a problem, you'll solve it in the editing room. And in the end, we find films that are 100% uh, correct. But... Uh, this is exactly maybe sometimes the problem, because it's really, really complicated to make mistakes in an artificial way. I mean, we are so aware of the things. We have such a, it's in a way overcoming yourself. Uh, 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 doing, it's overcoming this, this instinct of doing everything 
uh, fine. And um, I know, for instance, that, 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 that in synonyms, uh, synonyms is to, to, I don't know if you watched it already or not, but it's, it's in two sentences and a half. It's a story of a young Israeli guy who appears one day in Paris uh, with, uh, no, uh, with a bit of French, no papers. He doesn't know anyone. He doesn't have any practical program except for this existential decision to stop being Israeli and to, be, to become French, to die in Israeli, to be reborn as French, to, as he see it, heal himself from the Israeli disease, from the Israeli sickness. Um, and, 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 and so he ran away from Israel like we run away from a demon. And in a way, in a way, he is intelligent enough or clever enough to understand that in order to erase your identity, it's not enough to take a flight. I mean, w because of course, like in a horror movie, this Israeli demon is inside you. You run away from yourself. Uh, so he is doing a clever thing. He stops talking in Hebrew. Because in a way, you understand that Israel is inside, exists in the words of Hebrew language. I mean, if you run away from Italy, but you keep on talking Italian, so in each buongiorno, there is a bit of Italy. So you take Italy with you. So if you run away from Israel, but you keep on talking Hebrew, okay. So in a way... I, I can understand it very well because, well, I'm Italian, I've been living in Berlin for more decades now. Yeah. But uh, when I arrived in Berlin, I stopped talking Italian for two years. Yeah. So, <laughs> so and, and, I feel and, very and, close to and, this. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, yeah, so it's... it's so anyhow, so, 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 so he's, but that, now he doesn't have words, so he finds new words in French. And there's scenes of him mumbling synonyms in French, walking on the sidewalks of Paris. Um, and, and these scenes were shot uh, in a different camera, uh, in a small camera, with a crew of uh, the cameraman, the DP, my, myself and the actor, or sometimes only myself and the actor. And there, I, I, I try to, 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 to create a kind of a mise-en-scene of the camera that will be unaware of the gestures of the main character in order to create a kind of contradiction between them, not harmony, contradiction between them, that we lead hopefully, to mistakes. So when you see the movie, you can decide if I was right or wrong, but, uh, and if it's, it's really there, but I felt that it gives this, you know, this strangeness of coincidence and chaos to the film in order that it won't be too planified. It's like going a war against yourself. Maybe before I start with the first clip, which uh, shows us a, a scene which could be considered probably a kind of mistake of the of the protagonist. I would like to ask you if uh, this film could be considered like uh, the first part of your biography, uh, because there is a strong, strong link between your personal history and the film. Yeah, so um, I mean, the film, the story is, is, is right, it's, it's, I mean, it's, basically it's super autobiographical. Uh, myself, I've done like, um, Almost all of the Israelis, uh, three years, uh, three years and a half of military service. Uh, on a, been a um, small military base on the frontier, uh, in the in the belly of a mountain, in order not to be to be uh, protected from bombs. And then one day it stops, and you go back to to your to your city, and the, the same evening you drink a beer in a bar with a friend, next day you find work, you start to study in university, and everything is put behind in a way, as if, not as if it never happened, but as if it's normal, and it's no, in, in Israel it's super normal, but I think that you, when you normalize, but at the same time it's not normal at all, and when you normalize the normal, I think this is the place where the monster starts to, to grow. 
Um, so I let the monster grow for about a year, year and a half. I was studying philosophy in university and writing novels and working in a newspaper. And, 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 and one day I had like um, a little bit like Jeanne d'Arc who suddenly heard the divine voice, you know, exactly, or a little bit like this, you know, this cavern, a uh, famous tale of, uh, of uh, Platon, uh, Platon, like the, the only, this, the, everyone is inside a cavern and someone gets out and s feels that he see the sun and he can't, can't get in and yeah, they get in. But, but, but you know, like the, the, the suddenly the seeing person in, surrounded by blind people, I, I felt that I must run away, that this place turns me mad, that the place turns me crazy, that I must save myself, that I must run away. And I felt that it's really, it's maybe already too late, but if not, it's really the last moment because I understood that the place is inside me. So I, 10 days later, I landed in Charles de Gaulle Airport with uh, no French, well, a bit of French, no papers, no, no friends, no, no plans, nothing, but with the clear desire to uh, stop being Israeli and becoming French, to die as an Israeli and be reborn in French and live my life in Paris. And, and, and I remember that my biggest dream there was that maybe if I stop talking Hebrew, maybe if I, in two years, three years, will arrive the moment when, for, for instance, I'll open the newspaper and I'll see like an article about Israel and I'll read it with a kind of indifference and after, you know, like several lines, I'll be a little bit bored, so I'll read something else. I mean, to, to become indifferent, because as you know, when you become indifferent, this is, this is the moment that you, I mean, as long as you hate, it's just the other coin of, the other side of love, of course. So, 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 so the film, yeah, is really based on my own experience. Afterwards, I think that this experience is particular, but it's not so particular. Also, I think it's the, that, in a way, all of us, or a lot of us deal, of course, with question of identity and to which extent we are prisoners of our own identity and can we change our identity and can we become someone, someone, someone can we become something completely different? Um, yeah. So, Tanka, maybe we can start with the first clip. This, uh, this clip is very important in order to understand a little bit also the artistic profile of the film. And I'm very fascinated about everybody's naked. So, the, the space and the body. So, what about the relation between body and space in, in this scene? Yeah. Um... I mean, uh, um, to, to, like to give a short background, the guy, it's really the beginning of the movie, the guy arrives to a huge empty Parisian apartment, it's super cold, it's the middle of the winter, he goes to take a shower, everything he has, while taking a shower, everything he had disappears, he finds himself naked in, in a housemanian, marvelous but completely deserted apartment. Um, so I think it's divided to two things. I mean, I mean, on the narrative, on maybe symbolical uh, sense of the thing, in 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 the film, the the the, the this Israeli thing is 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 characterized by 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 virility, by masculinity, by by by, by the body. The body is Israeli. I mean, the, he, he has several encounters there with, with, with Israeli guys, and they are all like uh, 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 strong, violent, uh, muscular, and in love with their motherland. And he hates his motherland. So, so in a way, he hates his motherland, and he, and he doesn't want to talk Hebrew anymore. So, the, the, and, he lear, and he studies, learn new words, which are like a prayer in French, but the body is still Israeli. And there is something, you know, that, that this is thing that he cannot get rid of the body, the presence, the 
presence of the body is the presence of this thing that you cannot overcome. And he tries, because at the end of this scene, he's going to freeze to death, or kind of symbolical death, and in order to be reborn without everything. And after he's going to, to, to um, starve, starve his body, and the end is going to prost prostitute his body, but the body stays, stays there. I mean, I mean, I mean he, he cannot overcome the body. The other thing is, I think, is the presence of this, I mean, he is a little bit like Greek statue or, I don't know, maybe Israeli statue, but it's like, um, for me, there was something, uh, uh, um, he's a guy who is, um, is passing through a lot of hard experiences and he's uh, foreign in, uh, in a new country and he's traumatized by the military service and he doesn't have uh, money and he can't eat. Etc. So usually, I mean, he can be easily portrayed as, uh, you know, as the, 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 the miserable guy that should uh, get our empathy. But he has this body. And his body is like, it's so, for me, it's so charismatic. I mean, you know, it, it gains the space. It's, wherever he is, it's, it's, it's himself. And, and this is something that I think that put us as a spectator in a different position. You know, if it would have been, but because it's not, we can really feel pity for him, this pity that we keep for the, for the weak ones. And at the same time, he's, a point, he's, in, a, he's in a point of weakness, but, but he's powerful. And, and, and putting the powerful in a point of weakness, this confuse, confuse I think, everything, and it, we are, in a, in, a, in, a, in a different place. But then again, you know, films begin, of course, not, now I'm talking only about a, a translation of, of, of ideas, but um, I mean, I, 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 like synonyms talks about the film, talks about the most initial and basic thing. I mean, as I said, someone here wants to die in order to reborn. It goes to the to the to the to the to the deepest. Uh, it goes to the DNA, and I felt that if you go to the DNA, you should you should go to the to the basic, to the to the to the you know to the body, to the naked body, uh, to the most initial thing. And and and. And I thought that from the very beginning, because this happens after maybe three minutes of the movie, this guy should find himself in a kind of mythological battle. And this is, you know, he's, he's, he's fighting against coldness. He's fighting against loneliness. He's fighting against... Uh, yeah, being, 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 I mean, against uh, being a foreigner. Uh, uh, he's fighting against, and all of this in this wonderful decor. And, 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 and he's, 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 he's different inside this decor. Like he is going to be different inside Paris. You know, in all, throughout the film, he hangs all the time with a kind of strange orange coat. He's all, where it's different, trying to be assimilated is still different. And, and, and I knew that he's going to, 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 to run from one, one place to the other naked in this, in this Haussmannian decor. And I knew that unlike many other places in the movie, here the camera will not be on his side. The camera will not save him because there's something, you know, you see the camera here, the camera tells him, I mean, I don't know, try to survive, live, die. The camera is not, doesn't have any empathy for him. She's only like, you know, turning from here to there, from there to here, left, right, uh, 100, 180, 100 uh, uh, pan, panoramic, but uh, uh, the camera doesn't show any empathy. Um, and you know, it's also, there are always the, these things of revealing the, 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 the space and showing the space and ta, 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 and this. 
very often it leads to very, you know, to very banal shots and or to, or to disorientation. And I think, I thought it's a nice tour in the apartment. I mean, what can be touring in the apartment with a naked guy running uh, in the rooms? I thought it's a, it's a, it's a nice way to, 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 to reveal the space. Um, I think you have already answered my second question, which was, why did you choose a guy with such a perfect body? <laughs> And, uh, but another question could be, which is the, uh, uh, the relation between body and language? Consider you, you have written that the language is an intimate part of your body. Yeah, so, so, so as I said, uh, as I said, first of all, there is a kind of uh, contradictional here, I think, relation between body and language because, uh, because, uh, Although let's say on one hand there is a contradiction uh, relation between body and language because uh, I don't know words is this thing that he mumbles in order to forget the body. But um, but you know there are, there are, there are these uh, well-known dichotomies like they say like film of words is not film of action. Film where people talk is not etc. 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 Uh, a word is not a cinema cinematographical material or something like this. I, I mean, I'm in love with cinema and I'm in love with words, but I think that um, for me the, 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 the approach to words is as a material, not as a something that, that, because, yeah, if you treat words as the thing that, that will bring the signification of the movie, and, the, and you shoot a little bit around as a background. Like if back words are the facade and the rest is background, yeah, I mean, I, I agree that it might be, whatever it means, not very cinematic, it might be, be an interesting movie, but, but I treat words as, a, as another material. Like the, 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 in, in the universe, there are a lot of materials. Words, body, music, dances, gestures, city, people, etc., etc., etc. And when you give words uh, 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 an equal status to all the other ingredients, then words stop being only a, a scenaristic element and become a, 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 um, become a essential thing, become a materialistic thing. Suddenly you think about the, the, the how do you say, syllable? Uh, si si syllable? Yeah. yeah. Suddenly words become uh, music, suddenly words become melody, suddenly words have, have, yeah, you think about the difference between v and ha. Suddenly, suddenly, and, and, and suddenly words become an action. To talk become an action. Not only what you say, but the, the simple, and um, and then suddenly words are connected to the body uh, because they are both materials, they are both action. And of course, you know, when you make a film about something, who, someone who talks a foreign language, and not only talk a foreign language, but he talks the foreign language in order to make her its own because it's his way to re to redeem himself from Israel. But it doesn't matter. But when you talk about someone, when we Speak a foreign language, we think about this. The, 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 we have a different relation to words because suddenly we hear them. They are not automatic anymore. We hear them as voices, we hear them as sound, we hear them as music. Uh, we are aware. I mean, we can have a huge pleasure, pleasure of saying horrible words because we like the sound. Like maybe we like devastating. Take word like devastating, or maybe we like, I don't know, I mean, you understand what I'm saying? And then suddenly words become like, like a little bit, you know, in poetry, where words are not, where the poem is not only what it says, but, and, 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 and this is, I think, that the act of speaking, not only the, 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 the signification of words, and the, the, the words will have strange relation with the, the act of speaking, but I mean, this is a thing cinema about. What, in a way, if you go, what do you see when you hear these words? No? This is audiovisual. Thank you. I think we can start with the second clip. 
So this film is not uh, your story, it's also a story of your meeting people, meeting friends. So when he arrived, uh, he met this uh, French couple, uh, very well French speaking, yeah. and so they are extremely bourgeois. <laughs> so why did you decide to uh, get in touch with, the, the, to, to um, why did you choose this kind of French people? So extremely rich, very bourgeois, and why not, for example, a working class uh, couple, mixed Algerian, or don't know what? <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, yeah, so this, this young bourgeois uh, couple, uh, they live in the floor above, and actually when our hero is freezing to death at the end in the bath, they save his life, uh, they, save his li they save him from death. This, he opens his eyes, he lost everything, he can now be born like a baby, you know, baby gets out when he has nothing, he lost all he had, the only thing he has is this piercing that left from earliest life, the, from the previous life. And, uh, and then they give him everything. And I thought now, I thought two things, I thought it was the first time that I saw that he gives him uh, shirts of Kenzo, but this is not <laughs> interesting, because I, was, I don't know, I saw t Will million times this way. But I thought that in a, it's strange because there's something, I mean, they give him this orange coat. So on one hand, like they give him the opportunity to become a normal person. And on the other hand, in a very clever way, they put a kind of sign on him. I mean, they, the guy is, is in a way put him, you know, I mean, uh, uh, signing him that, that he's different. But, um, you know, I think that, that, that he, 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 he comes to Paris in order to meet a kind of um, fan, fan, fantasized, you say it fantasized? Like Paris of, of his fantasies, Paris is a legendary Paris, a kind of Paris uh, uh, um, a kind of ultime Paris. Uh, the Paris yeah, of his fantasies, of his thoughts, and uh, and this Paris is expressed by 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 this uh, by this young uh, Parisian couple who has they have everything that he he doesn't have. Oh, sorry, fuck, sorry. It's Yav. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah, it's Yav. Yeah. Sorry, fuck. Apologies. Um, they, they have everything that he, he, he doesn't have. Elegance, style, uh, manners. Uh, 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 and he has everything they don't have. Libido, uh, uh, wildness, um, stories. Because, you know, there's, in a certain moment, begins in the film a kind of traffic between him and the guy. They become very close, and the guy is kind of, uh, he's trying to write, he's a kind of writer, and he gives Yav clothes, money and everything, and Yav gives him his stories, because he has stories, he passed a lot of things, the stories from his past. So, I mean, I thought that there's something in this meeting which is also the cultural meeting between a kind of mythologic, mythological Israeli or mythological Israel and a mythological, mythical French, uh, myth mythical friends, because uh, uh, it's, a, it's a meeting point between, between these, two, these two cultures. Now, I think that for me, there are like two main attitudes to, on this sense to script. There are very narratively sophisticated scripts that I respect. I don't know how to write them, but I respect those who do. Where you know everything is, is, is surprising and unpredicted. For instance, then he would have met, I don't know, an uh, Algerian guy who turns out to be an opera singer and da, 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 da. Okay. I mean, I like, I have a kind of attraction for for 
mythical things, for mythological things, to, 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 to go to the, to, the, to, the, to the simple, to the basic, to the nude, but to try to dip inside, 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 as deep as I can. To go in a way to the most predicted, I mean, it's predicted in a way that coming to France to meet the opposed thing to the culture he ran away from, he's going to meet these people, and of course, or not of course, but uh, he's going to find in the end that um, they are totally different, but each country has its form of violence. I think uh, Yav is also a kind of mirror for the couple because they, they, they can deal with themselves and obviously desire does play an extremely important role, it's a libido. It's a little bit like, 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 like Theorem in a way, like Theorem of Pasolini, you know, I mean, I mean both of them want to, to have him, mm. they need him, like they need to take things from him, he has what they, what, 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 what they miss, what they lack. You have written uh, Yav's body as a kind of theater of war between Israeli and French core values. So it's, you, yeah. st you st still agree? <laughs> it what, it what, sorry? That, that. It's a, a theater of war bet between Israel and French values. That Yav's body, Yav, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I think, you know, Yav is, is exactly, I mean, I mean, um, this, Israeli-French contradiction uh, or, 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 or conflict happens inside his, his own body and soul. This is, I think, the, 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 is the problem that, uh, you know, it's a little bit, that's why it's a little bit, you know, there are, it's a little bit like a horror movie, it's a little bit like, I mean, the film is not, but you know, like in Rosemary's Baby, when the, div, the devil is inside you, the devil is inside him. And, 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 and he's opposed to the devil and he tried to, to, to go to other places, but, but he's a walking con contradiction. Thank you. Um, another clip, please. I think uh, this clip is uh, extremely important. We can, talk, we can talk days about the... the, the, the the content of this clip, but I would like to, to start first with, with, with the language again, because, um, so this is the story of a guy uh, trying to find a new place, trying to co forget completely his own language, and somehow I would say there is a strong link between this personal story and the story of Israel, because if we think about the story of Israel and so the past century, 1948, maybe before and later, it was about many people trying somehow the same. So arriving in Israel and learning a language, which probably nobody spoke. <laughs> yeah, I remember, you know, I read, I read something that, that years ago that, that I've been thinking a lot. I try to imagine these scenes. And, and, and it gives me a full inspiration to this movie that I don't know to which extent you know or not, but, but when Israel was founded, then they, they like Hebrew was a language that was, it's the Bible is written in Hebrew. And then for 2000, uh, then the Israel, the Jewish people, they were exiled to diaspora. And it was a saint uh, language. They didn't talk Hebrew for 2000. It was a uh, forbid to talk in Hebrew. They, 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 only in synagogue, only to pray in Hebrew, never to talk. And they didn't talk in Hebrew for 2,000 years, and then when, when this was this idea of Zionism, of the return of Israelis to their biblical place, one of the biggest, biggest, biggest thing that was done, biggest act, was renewing Hebrew. But now to use it as a normal language, as a secular language, as the language, the new language of the, the new old language, it will connect them to the Bible. Okay, this was history lesson. But, um, but, so, I mean, I mean, these were people who were, um, they were running away from their houses in Europe where everything was apparently more or less okay to go after a strange vision. And they were super, I mean, they were extreme, so they went, Till the, till the, you know, they went all, all the way after their ideological vision, a little bit like our hero. And now the idea was that they should talk in Hebrew. So they stopped talking in their original languages, 
Russia and uh, Hungary and Polish, whatever. And they from they now stop talking Yiddish. Yeah, in Yiddish. And from now on, they'll talk only in Hebrew. But their Hebrew was poor. They knew. And I read like that they were, you know, for instance, couples. Imagine couples. They couldn't anymore talk about their complex uh, problems because we are, you know, we are slaves also of our vocabulary. They lacked the vocabulary to talk about complicated issues. So I remember I read once a description of families that were sitting around the table and the only thing they, couldn't, they knew how to say is, uh, give me the tomato, please. Water, coffee, bread. And I thought it's, it's marvelous. I mean, it's marvelous that, that someone make a decision to give up his words. Uh, because the previous words are, filth, are filthy. You cannot, it's a sin. You cannot, you cannot say it anymore. And there is a hope in the new words, but, but, but you don't know them enough yet. So, yeah, so of course, it gave me inspiration exactly to, to, to the story of Yoav, which makes exactly, he goes from Israel to Europe, uh, abandoning the Hebrew, which for him is a cursed language, for a language, for a new one. Um, and Yoav's French is playful. I mean, it is, it's playful and it's strange, it's unique, it's him, it's his own French. Maybe, is it a parallel to his attempt to find his own friends, his own Paris, as he say? Like he say, he say I want to, 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 to discover the heart of Paris, but, but, but I'm sure that, that the heart of, you know, that all the banalities that we say when you think about Paris, La Seine, uh, uh, beauty, I don't know, women, desire, nah, 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 it's a, a pleasure. It's a, this is not the heart of Paris. There's another heart of Paris. And I'm going to find this heart without looking around me. Because if I look around me, if I, if I see Paris, it will confuse me. I mean, Paris is like, you know, this beautiful thing that can, with its beauty, it, it confuses you and you, you cannot see the heart, the, the heart of things. And then the film is going to be, Yoav is going to, throughout the film, trying to look without looking, see without, uh, understand, grasp something that he cannot look at, because Yoav is looking for his own Paris. And the film also is looking for its own Paris, because also for the director of this movie, the question was how to shoot a Paris that is not like the Paris of 10,000 French directors, how to shoot the, this Paris. Um, I have a lot of st to say, but maybe. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think uh, obviously this is an extremely political film. I mean, it's saying Israel will die soon. And um, now I think it, it, somehow Yoav is dealing with his personal diaspora. <laughs> And uh, the, the reason with this diaspora, it has nothing to do, I don't know, with the Roman Empire or with the destruction of the temple or something like that, but with the Israeli government. So, 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 so I think, you know, um, like, that's fine. Yesterday I said here in a press conference something about uh, that uh, I've been asked, uh, how do I explain uh, people, young people who leave Israel? And I said, uh, well, I was tired also. But I said that uh, I don't understand how the young Israeli people that stay in Israel, not those who leave. And now today, so today it made a scandal in Israeli press. So, yeah, so the film is a political uh, context. But, I mean, I mean, you saw the guy now cursing Israel is, with all the synonyms, with all the adjectives he has in the dictionary. At the same time, I must say that uh, I think that the film is, I hope that the film is not a simple political uh, declaration. I mean, the film is not voting to a political party and is not uh, an article. And also you have, I think, the, the main, if you would ask him about Israel, he would, yeah, as you saw, he would, he would tell you. But I don't know, you know, if he has a, a simple political argument to say, because his problem is not with, is not his, a tactical problem. His problem is not with a certain uh, political step that the Israeli government is doing and he would have liked them to do something a little bit different. So, no, no, no. His problem is, is what he see as the DNA of the Israeli soul. 
And for him, the, the DNA of the Israeli soul is, 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 is terrible, it's a disaster. Of course, DNA of what does it mean? This, uh, of course, it's, it's the result of history, etc. But it doesn't matter. But this is the, the, the so so it's much more. It goes much, 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 much farther. Much, much. It goes beyond a simple uh, uh, political statement. And at the same time, as as I began in the beginning, to, just talking about uh, chaos. I think that in synonyms, a little bit like words, there are a lot of very harsh uh, political and ideological declaration. They are there, and I totally, I mean, I'm, I'm happy they are there, I wrote them. But political declaration are also, it's not, the film is not trying to, 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 to support or to raise just a poli certain political uh, argument. I think that for me, I must say that recently you, you see for me too many movies that I feel that the movie is an attempt to, to, to back certain political argument. I think that in this movie, uh, political arguments and theories are there exactly like words, exactly like stories, exactly like like you saw the way he moves, like he dances his politi political theories, exactly like body, exactly like sex, and food, and, and, and music, etc., etc. Thank you. I would like to, to show now, not the next clip, but the clip starting with the two girls dancing in, in the bar, if possible. Thank you. Also, this clip is uh, extremely important because there are so many different layers of, of meaning. Yeah. First of all, um, uh, Yoav's friend, he, he cannot deal with his own identity because so we, yeah, we're watching it. And he said, ah, um, oh, I'm Jewish and yeah. I'm from Israel. And the French guy said, oh, welcome, perfect. Yeah. But yeah. it's more about being overwhelmed by this uh, situation. So would you say that is a common feeling for many Israeli citizens? They cannot deal with their own identity? I think that Israel is in a country in a situation of overdose. It's overdosely Israeli. You know, I mean, I mean there are too much Israelis, the Israelis. And... and, and, and and this guy is an example, like, like he, he, you know, I mean, again, historically, you, might, you know, for years, like, Jews were ashamed of their identity. And Israel was founded in order the Jews, in order to, to, to replace the weak Jew with the strong one. So he is a little bit like, he is the strong one, he's shouting his identity. He comes to you when you sit in a bar and he's barking at you, I'm Israeli, I'm Jew, etc. Et he's like... Excessively Israeli. This guy is a guy that uh, the main character meets while going to work in the Israeli embassy. Um, and the strange thing, I think, if we talk earlier about politics, that this guy, the other guy, the, the guy that you saw here, theoretically he's the total negative of Yoav, because Yoav ran away from Israel and he found himself, as I say, with an overdose of Israeli guy, with an excessive Israeli, and yet he is totally attracted to this guy. Uh, is it because of the fact that politics and aesthetics are not the same thing? Is it because of the fact that on the political level he is totally disgusted by this guy, but he, he has this love for the overdose, for the, for the, for the, I mean, this guy is so Israeli that it become heroic. And in Yoav's head, he's become like childhood hero, like, like a, like a mythological hero, like the Hector, he is telling, the Hector from Troy, who is telling him, telling him his story. And is it, of course, also because inside of Yoav, there is this side. I mean, this guy is a reflection of something that still exists in him this, what we were talking about, the body, this, this, this over, over well-shaped body, this over, this excessiveness. Um, you know, I mean, the film is a film, I mean, there's a lot of men in the film. There's, and that's why, in a way, I wanted to, after, I think it comes to, after 40 minutes, 
to bring two women and I wanted that the song will be Here Come the Girls. I mean to, you know, enough, enough, enough with the men, Here Come the Girls. Yeah, there is a, a real moment of joy. So the, yeah. it, it, I was also asking about the, 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 the function of music in, the, in this film, because uh, when I, I watched the film the first one, time, I said to myself, maybe I should go dancing for, uh, after a long time. But at the same time, it's not really about pleasure, the, the function of the music. It's about introducing this discussion. Totally. Uh, I, I, I mean... In general, like in my movies, there is a lot of sen scenes of dance. And, and I always think that, I mean, I like the idea that people dance themselves to the camera. Like they present themselves to the camera while dancing. Like the dance become, become a way of declaring yourself. Um, and here, here I, mean, I mean, I thought that it's a kind of... It's a kind of, cinema, I think, cinematically clever and playful thing, because I think that the film is dark, but it's also playful and funny and comic. And, but playful thing starting with the girls, passing to the boys, going to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to this strange political act, shouting on people that are Jews and Israeli, and going back to this Greek thing that go at the end again to the main thing, because you have... This is his rebellion against the Israeli spirit. He's for the coward, not for the courageous. He's for the loser, not for the winner. But, but you know, I think that all of this, I mean, you don't want to find yourself at the end with a series of, uh, of declarations. You want to find life. And life is about, I think, how things happen at the same time. I mean, we all, I think we all, again, it's instinctive. We all know these moments, the details of, ah, I just had a super, uh, I don't know, a super uh, important phone call, and suddenly there were kids who were playing, I don't know, were uh, running in the street, and, uh, and I heard from a, from a passing car, a, a dancing queen of ABBA. And this is strange, because, because I don't know, the, the phone call was one thing, and the car was another thing. So... You know, this song and a story about, uh, it's, I mean, it's, 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 I think it's awkward, it's a bit funny, it's a bit, but it's also, for me, it's very, very real. And there's something about two people shouting in a bar, a mythological story. It takes the words and put them elsewhere. So the, the, the mythological part plays a key role for, for the, narrative de development on the film because it's about uh, Israeli identity. So you cannot be a coder. Totally. It's not, it's not accepted. Totally, 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 totally. Yeah, the mythological thing is, is very important in the movie. I think, I think also the identification with the main character, with Hector, is an interesting thing because, you know, in Israel we have, we must be always the winners. We have this obsession for victory. I don't know. The French lost a lot, of, a lot of wars, but they are still here. We always believe that we, we, it's forbidden to lose. We must always win. So there's a kind of rebellion in this identification with the loser. But I would even say more than this, because you know, um, in a country where there's a myth of heroism, of military, her, her, so the idea, in a way, that heroism, that heroes are stronger than death. I mean, in a way, this is... The only way someone can send you to be a soldier is when you believe that if you'll be heroic enough, you won't die, or you don't understand. And Hector, he, he is not losing to, uh, uh, to a stronger hero. He's losing to death. And I think there's something, you know, you have understand that death is stronger than that all the heroes in the world, there's no hero who can face death. And this is something, you know, that, that, that detach him from this, this Israeli myth. Thank you. And now, please, the, the clip in the subway. Uh, obviously, there is a clip, a link with, also with the other clip, but um, for me, this, this, this scene is even more stronger on, on the symbolic level. First of all, he wears his kippah only for the subway, and then uh, 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 he meets 
he meets the enemy. So the Arab looking guy at, at the end and he's completely disparate. So it's a, it's a very strong emotional moment of the film. And now watching the clip another time, I'm aware that looking Yov, looking at his friend, that the friend is really of a part of his identity. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, is 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 more more mumbling. How do you say? How do you say? How do you call what what he's doing? Humming. He's humming the Israeli national anthem. But um, yeah, I mean, when we talk about overdose of Israeli, so this is a super overdose, huh? The guys on Israeli drugs. But uh, no, but I mean, I mean. I'll say two things. I mean, I think, and you, I think you can feel it in the film. There's something in in Israel where there's a kind of dichotomy. It's either us or them, and either you're a part of us or you're a part of them. And them is, let's say, the Arabs, and all of the other are Arabs, but they are worst Arabs and, and light Arabs. But so, so, so he's going in the metro, yeah, and at the end he find he find the enemy. Um, Afterwards, you know, I think that um, for me, movie making here is, it's an attempt to, to, to create um, these, these moments that could have been, in a way, also video arts, and then to connect them. Because this could have been like video art, I don't know, Israeli national hymns, uh, shown apart and running like this in circles in I don't know which museum. Uh, and it's always, a th it's always a thing that the, 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 the question is how you, on one hand, how you, how you take uh, visual images, ideas, things, thoughts, and you condense them. Because you can say a lot of things about the Israelis like this, and like, but you try to condense them. And I thought that someone who's humming like this, with this rage, this hymn in the face of people, the, in a, in, a, in, a, in in a metro, and, and then afterwards you should you should you should you should attach it to 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 normal life, to normal to to the world. So maybe we have the um, we have now the last clip in in the school, learning French, learning beef in French. <laughs> So it's not only about criticizing Israel, uh, J Jewish identity and everything, but it's also about uh, France and meaning Europe. Because basically, somehow, personally, I can also share these values. But the question is how to deal with this. So it's not about a new colonization of diversity somehow. Yeah, so as, as we said, violence has a lot of uh, faces. Um, you know, I think that, that when we ask ourselves uh, about uh, changing identity, etc., of course, people, one person who voluntarily or not run away from his identity needs also a place that will accept him, that will integrate him, and will accept him as he is, because otherwise it's not accepting. Uh, and will not a place that will accept him as he should be, according to the place. And so a place that will tell him you should be like us, and of course it's a trap because you'll never be like us, and then you know you're forever in this purgatorium of, of Dante. You'll never, you'll never be French. You can try, you can try. You're like the dog who's running after his own, um, his own tail. Um, afterwards, so yeah, so I mean, I mean, and. You know, the thing is that, maybe it's not important, but I, I went twice to these classes, and I must tell you that French people, when they see these scenes, they, I mean, they, like, they love them, they, they, they are angry, there are a lot of people, a lot of things, but especially they think that it's a fiction thing. Every word that is said here is said in these classes, and it goes far beyond. that. It was so crazy that at a certain moment, I understood that if I'm not going to, to, to moderate it, to make it more moderate, no one will, will believe will believe it. But, uh, but uh, I mean, you, well, you know, it's this mixture that we all know between good intentions and uh, a little bit of uh, condescendence and 
a little bit of racism, racism. But um, afterwards, I must tell you that it's always also the opposite thing. I mean, I think that for me at least, because it's exactly like for me, there's also, or let's say for you have, but also for me, there's also something aesthetic in this Israeli violence. I'm also impressed by a 40 something woman teacher who stands in a class and declares that God doesn't exist. I mean, I think it's so radical. I mean, it's so unbelievable. And, and this, yeah, I mean, at the same time, it's, it's, it's false and stupid, but it's also, um, it's extreme. I, I can also appreciate it. So before starting, before starting our, our q and I would say that Tom Mercier, or Mercier, is, is French originally? He's, he's Israeli. He's Israeli. He, yes, but maybe the family name. Ah, yeah, he, he really learned French for, for the shooting, so his character is completely believable. Yeah. Yeah. He's, a great, he's a great actor. So. Thanks, thanks. I'll tell him. <laughs> so, well, maybe you have some questions, and I think we have also some microphones. First a question, then the microphone, or maybe together. <laughs> Hi. Um, I uh, wanted to ask you a bit more about your writing process and how you navigate politics in your film. Um, you spoke earlier about how one of the problems that you identify in films that are rooted in social criticism is that they often declare their politics or put their politics blatantly in the face of the audience. And one of the things that you attempted to do was to find the politics within the aesthetics, as you said, and to find it in these relationships and moments with actors and human beings. Um, I'm one of those filmmakers that, that makes that mistake, that often spoon feeds my politics to my audience. And so I'd like to know from you a bit more about how you um, evade that problem in your writing process and the sorts of measures and things that you might do as a writer to avoid that mistake. Yeah, I, I think that um, I'm, I mean, what I really try is to, is to go to what I feel is the truth of things. And the truth of things, I think that this dichotomy between political and personal, it's totally artificial. Who lives his life like this? I mean, I mean, even the, I think that even Nelson Mandela didn't live on, his life only concerned. And his, I mean, people, it's always confused. It's always things are always mixed, and sometimes they're mixed in a harmonic way, and sometimes they're mixed in a disharmonic way, and sometimes they 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 they're mixed in a terrible way and in a funny way, and quite often it's 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 both, but. That's exactly, I think, what's artificial about, you know, uh, all this. Uh, the film promotes an important uh, topic of our days, the statues of uh, children in Saudi Arabia. Okay. But, uh, I mean, we should, we should, I mean, myself and I think a lot of us, we are concerned with politics. We are, we live our life. We have our body. Uh, we do a lot of stuff, and we think also. And we, and for me, if in a way, if you want to talk about politics inside of life as it is, as a part of life, you must keep this 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 balance, which is truth. And if you keep it, I think we'll discover that sometimes the most uh, political discussion is a total non-political -politi act, while dancing might be political, or having sex might be an act of politics, or, or eating might be. So, because, because the, the things, are, 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 I think, I think are, 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 are really mixed. So this is in a way, I mean, this is in a way how I try to, 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 to to, 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 to fabricate, to, to fabricate things, to, 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 to put them in the context. Thank you. Maybe there is another question. 
Plup. Pop. Hi. So it's not a question, but I felt obliged to show my uh, extreme uh, appreciation and extreme uh, happiness with uh, your work. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, as an Egyptian and Arabic uh, director, I'm really proud of your, of your work and I'm proud of your such a production. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks. We are, we are neighbors. Um, back. Okay, first there. Um, yeah, I just have a question. You were talking in the beginning about mistakes and about how um, generally, if I understand it correctly, in film, mistakes are eliminated through just the process of the making. And um, then some I have a feeling you were cut off, I'm not really sure. So the question is, um, do you try to reintegrate maybe mistakes or chaos or something in the yeah. movie, and how do you do that? Uh, this is a good question. Um, yes, I'm trying. How do I do the, this? It's, it's hard. I ask myself. Uh, first of all, let's say that I, I all, more I make movies, more I feel this, 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 um, this tension, which is the interesting thing between concept and liberty. I mean, you know, having your concept meaning trying to design the world according to certain perimeters, certain point of view. Being free is letting the world penetrate inside of your system, your machine, your frame. It's two opposed values, but paradise is exactly there for me, the, 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 between them. Um, let's say one thing. I think that mistakes, we tr should try to reintegrate them as late as possible in the process, because, because Usually, otherwise, we won't be able to keep them till the end. I mean, if the mistakes come too early, we'll, our self will, will, will erase them in a moment of weakness. Um, so, it's like, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit different. I, mean, you, I guess you know these moments where you, 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 you write a version of your script, and someone tells you, listen, uh, yeah, oh, ta -ta -ta, this was good. You know? This uh, character, I don't know, I thought it's too uh, weak. Uh, I think uh, you need to invent something for this uh, character that will show the fact that it sometimes might be aggressive. And then you okay, say, fuck, OK, I'll try to invent this act. And all the things that you think about usually are banalities. like. You, you write a scene where the, where the girl or the guy, they're in the car in a traffic jam, and they are nervous, and they are shouting on the other driver. Yeah, it's super banal. And things like this. And I think always, for me, the only way in these moments when you have to invent something is if you can think about a, a real, real action you know, of someone you know or you saw or of yourself who was aggressive, because our thought is, is limited. We are bound, and more, more we advance, unfortunately, in this writing of the script, more we are bound to our script, and we lose the connection with uh, the strangers and the truth of, of life. So we have to borrow things that will refresh our mind. That's why I think that, that, that in order to accept the existence of mistake, or in order to let, I think mistakes for me is to call the world to intervene in your frame. That's why, for me, you know, I, I'm for, for instance, I'm not, I'm not improvising. It's not improvisation. It's not something that interests me so much, because I think that when you, for me. And, uh, when you do improvisation, why not? I mean, you can get very fresh thing and uh, spontaneous. But when the whole thing is improvised, it's, it's harmony of mistakes. It's only mistakes, in a way. It's mistakes. And then, of course, you know, I don't know, you walk in the street, you see someone uh, falling, it's funny. It's a mistake, why not? Or it's sad, I don't know, depends. But if you 
build everything, and then you let the world penetrate inside your frame, after everything is, is built at, a, at certain moments, so maybe there, there can be the, the, this conflict between the right and the wrong, the correct and the... And the Afterwards, of course, what I'm doing now is that I'm conceptualizing, conceptualizing my mistakes, so it's not mistakes anymore, it's a problem. But, yeah, but this is, you know, a, fr a friend of mine, someone I know is a well-known director, he always, I um, remember he, we were talking and he told me that he has a thing, he is working with non-actors, I mean, he used to work with non-actors, and that he constructs the frame to till the slightest details and everything is planified, etc., etc., etc. And his, the casting process is very, very long. But then he told me that he never it intervenes with the expression on the face of the actor, because as if he built everything around, but he let the surprising thing to to because he told me otherwise the screen become a mirror. You look at the screen and you see your face, your, yourself. Afterwards, I don't believe him so much, because I think that he's too controlled thing. But, but let's, but, but, but yeah, I think it's, it's a war against your nature, but I'm trying not to be, you know, that the worst things are film, not the worst, but it's not, it's quite dull films that become a kind of puppet show. You know, you go from left to right, right to left, traveling here, traveling there, ta, 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 the actors there. And if you have a sense of mise-en-scene, you can easily become addicted to your own uh, puppet show. So, yeah. We have a question, yes. Hi. Um, I'll say something before uh, the, my question. Uh, I'm Egyptian as well, and uh, actually uh, coming here when I knew that uh, an Israeli filmmaker was talking, it was kind of, uh, but uh, I'm so glad that uh, from your talking, I, I, I get to have feelings with the movie, not, uh, not just that uh, uh, the movie is trying to say something. Uh, uh, yeah, it's you. You wasn't forcing things to be said. I felt that what's happening is very true. Uh, so this gives a different perspective. And and, and for me, until a, a very recent uh, time, I always has this uh, uh, prejudgment. Uh, but but recently, I'm I'm so glad to see artworks that speaks the real feelings and uh, to make us see the the real human side. Of, uh, of everything. You, you know, I think that one of the benefits of us as filmmakers is that we were not, we, uh, unlike, I don't know, journalists who write articles, uh, that we, are, we, we don't have to be right. And we, yes. can, we, can, we can be on the side also of those who are wrong. Definitely. And for instance, I really like the idea that those who are wrong are more beautiful than those who are right. I think it's 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 a refreshing idea. Yeah, well, well for, for me it's it's feeling. It it can be right, it can be wrong. I mean, it's it's an honest uh, um, state. So that's why I wanted to ask you if uh, if those characters you feel that they are all inside you, you are trying to get to uh, to vent out uh, different states that you are having, or those are inspiration of uh, of uh, persons you have seen. I mean, how? How did this come to you? Yeah, I think I think it's uh, yeah, I think both. I mean, I think it's uh, they're all. Uh, you know, I said before that the main character is a little bit walking conflict between all sort of opposed things. I mean, he's uh, he's uh, seduced or attracted or excited by his this Israeli guy, but also by the French uh, people because they are all inside him, and I. They are based, some of them are based on things that I feel inside me, and some of them are based on, uh, on, uh, on uh, people I, I, I met, but that I think that, 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 that I was marked by these meetings, seduced by these meetings, because they communicate with something that existed inside me, or they left traces on, 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 on me. And again, like you said, I mean, I think that um, 
I wouldn't, for instance, like to talk about violence if I wouldn't feel violence also inside me. I'm not giving more lessons. It's not something that fascinates me. Yes. Um, I like this. Uh, yeah, I just had a question more about your writing process um, in terms of the screenplay, how long it took you to write it. You said that you had to show it uh, about a, a certain character, show a trait, you had to put in a certain scene, so you're obviously interacting with other people while you were writing it, maybe with producers and stuff. Just to get a bit more input into how long it took to write the screenplay, the development of it, and the, yeah, the interaction with other people and the craft of, of writing that screenplay, that particular screenplay. Uh, just some more information on that. Um, I just, uh, was three, four months ago, I finished uh, my new script, and it took me three weeks to write it. It was miraculous. And this script took me, it depends how you count. I would say three years, but one can count, uh, because it's based on notes that I took in 2001. Before I knew that like, at this period I couldn't care less about cinema and films, I didn't know anything about movies. I discovered cinema during this Parisian stay. But, uh, but, but notes that I took because I felt that I've lived something that has a meaning. So, so maybe you can say that I'm writing this script for, for almost 20 years. But that's why, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I can tell. Scripts are different, you know, and they are, I'm with myself, it's, I have scripts that usually people love and are very, very easy to finance, and I have scripts that everyone hates, and, and, and the only reason I, today I can finance them is because uh, my previous films had a certain su had the success, so, for instance, Synonyms had a script, it was a script that everyone, I'm, I'm generalizing, but that, People hated. They didn't hate, but they were afraid of. It was it was excessive. It was too much. Like, you know, when when I start to to the, the financing process, so like my films, then the people love them in France, and they were ah, oh, we are so happy that you come here to make a movie in France, and then they read the script. But why this movie? Uh, so um, so that's why you know I find it hard to to to, to have general uh, to to, to find. I can say one thing that I really believe. In, in the intuition of the writer. I mean, I mean, uh, I myself once I was how do you call it the mentor in Sundance Lab, and then I worked with Egyptian uh, filmmaker. It was nice uh, in Sundance Lab, and, uh, and from time to time I'm. But in general, I think that these places, I mean, advices is a very dangerous thing, in my opinion, because. Because people, all of us, we give very easily advices to other people, you know. We are so, I mean, we are so free, so, so freedom is nice, but I, 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 I begin with the, always with, the, with, the, with this basic idea that the, the creator is the person who knows best his, 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 the thing he creates, because because he's the, the genesis of all this, because he's thinking about it, because he's dreaming about it, because he wakes with it in the morning and goes to sleep with it in, in evenings. And, and so, I mean, in a way, I think, you know, when you get a radical advice, take it only if you have no other choice. Don't take it easily, because advice is very seducing, and afterwards, there's... I, I, I always feel that it's very powerful when you feel that fi a film belongs to someone. The, the, with, with the defaults, with the mistakes, with the, with the advantage, you know, but that the film was important to someone. And the danger behind, you know, listening to 50 people and taking a little bit from here, that at the end it will be like a kind of pudding. Okay, good quality pudding, but pudding. And uh, so, so, so if I can say something is that, that Afterwards, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, there are, there are the, like in life, in cinema, there are no real laws. 
I mean, the regulations. I mean, sometimes I guess an advice, it's, it's, it's fantastic and actually it helps you to, and sometimes you get an advice, this happens very often, no? you get an advice, you don't listen to it, but while thinking about it, you find something else. Um, I remember that, 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 that I, were, I have a friend who's a scriptwriter and he always said that, that, that says that uh, luckily there's a moment that you have to shoot because otherwise you could have worked on a script your whole life. I mean, you know, you can prove, you know, this, the, the, there's a kind of legend about a museum that one day there's a siren in the middle of the night and then they find the painter and they discover that each night he gets, he penetrates the museum and he and he uh, like he make a slight change in his in his painting because it's endless. So um, yeah, so I didn't help you so much, but I think it's a very interesting uh, <clears throat> statement. Advising is dangerous, and then also I'm happy we, we share more or less the same opinion because sometimes it, as with the word cinema fund, there are many filmmakers that they ask, oh, I don't know, I'm so, I don't feel comfortable with my script, maybe I need a script doctor or something like that. And I always say, okay, but take care. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. It's like the, the French, uh, good intentions, you, you, we know where they lead us to. Maybe we have time for the last question, the last ultimate question in the first row. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I don't know if I'm like, ready for the last question. Um, First of all, I'd like to thank you for this film. <clears throat> I saw it this morning with a friend and we were like, we're walking alongside Berlin today. We were like trying not to talk about it, but we talked about it the whole day because it's like, it's very close to us because we're like, next year we're preparing to move to another country and it's like, it started a really uh, big debate between us. And um, my question was, um, what, I, what I really loved the most from this film that it has this really strong, uh, images that synthesize the theme of, of, of the, I mean, how the character uh, relates to the, the environment and his situation. And I was thinking it's also a, a script writing, uh, script writing uh, question, I think. How do you come with these images? Do, are, are they the, the first to, to, to come in your head or, or do you like um, synthesize them after you have the plot? How do you go about this? Because I, I feel like they, they say so much just by, and I, I'm having personally a difficulty achieving this, so. Uh, so in, in, in the good cases, it, it begins like this, but quite often it's not. And then I try to talk to myself about the moment and the moment that, that, that I want, I mean, I really believe that cinema is based on, we should create moment and moment and moment, and then of course to, to attach them, but, and, and I try to start to talk to myself about the moment and, I, and then I understand what's beautiful about it, what's strong about it, what's funny and sad and tragic and comic about it. What, and, 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 and then things start to come out. Now it can be, you know, it can be a scenaristic thing and it can be color. Like it can be, and at the same time there'll be I don't know, a huge pink poster in the, in the because, because it, it, it gives something, gives a kind of depth, you know, to this, to this, to this, uh, to this uh, painting. But I think that for me, really talking to myself, this is also, by the way, the way I'm doing shooting. When, when, when I talk to myself and I understand the, the, the ingredients of the scene, of the moment, of the, then I, then I is really I understand you know, and I said, and there then will be big face and uh, I don't know, and the nose of, and the nose, and then, and then I know, and then I know, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm not, I don't like to talk in medium and close-ups. I like to talk about the thing, and then, you know, medium and close-up, it's technical. But, uh, but, uh, so this is for me the thing, I try to, to, to decompose the moment and to push it to push it as far as possible and then sometimes you you need to to to, to reduce a little bit but at the beginning you must i think you, you should feel what's what can exist there in order to 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 to, to, to that things will be as powerful and as contradictory as possible 
Okay. There is another question, the real ultimate one. Um, as an Israeli uh, young director who lives in Berlin uh, and really can uh, identify with the film, <laughs> didn't you? Uh, was afraid like to, 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 to put this hate of Israel on the screen like and afterward I live here for li for mm, four years Israel is still in the home or what do you feel about this? Uh, I think that uh, you know I, I, I wasn't maybe I was I mean afraid yeah maybe sometimes but but life is too short to to fear this kind of things but I think that my basic starting point is that I'm and I hope that you feel it in the movie but that I'm not, I really don't feel it, it's not just a matter of speaking, that I'm better than these people. I, I'm sick in the same, I have the same, suffer from the same disease. And when you suffer from the same disease and you talk about your own disease, you don't have to be polite, because everyone has the right to insult himself. And I'm insulting myself, so, 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 you know, I, ca I can use uh, harsh words. So insulting ourselves, maybe it's not a mistake. <laughs> maybe it's not a mistake, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Nadav, thank you very much for this uh, conversation. Thanks. All the best for this film. Merci, à la prochaine. Merci beaucoup.